Today we're going to learn how to draw a fall landscape on a pumpkin farm. So let's get started. You should have a piece of paper and a pencil. And on the back of your paper you should have your name and class code. Once you have that, we're going to get started. Now you've already gone over the vocabulary words, but we're just going to put them into play right now. We talked about a word that is where the ground meets the sky. And where the ground meets the sky, that is the horizon line. That's the line we're going to put right in the middle of the page. Now there's a point somewhere on this horizon line where everything disappears to or vanishes, and it's called the vanishing point. And if you're listening and you've already learned the hand motions, I bet you've just clapped your hands. Awesome. All right, from this vanishing point, we're going to draw some lines towards us. So this one's going to be a diagonal line out this way, and this one is going to be a diagonal line this way. So it kind of looks like a triangle. In other examples that we saw the days before, this kind of looks like a road, how the road is really wide in the foreground or the area closest to us. And as it passes through the middle ground and eventually stops in the background, it gets smaller and smaller in size. So as it gets closer to the vanishing point, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's what we're going to do. This is going to be a pumpkin farm, and this is going to be a row of pumpkins. So in this foreground area, I want you to draw a big pumpkin. So it's kind of like a circle. Got a little rectangle on top. If you want to be a fancy, you can draw an oval. And then these are going to curve to the left and curve to the right. If you want to make another big one, ooh, this one looks nice. It's going to have a little thing to the side. Sometimes they're a little lopsided. We're going to curve to the left, curve to the right. Now, as we move into the middle ground, these pumpkins are going to get smaller and smaller. All right. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if you have a lot of pumpkins or a little, as long as you can show me that it, the foreground is big, the middle ground is middle, and the background is small. So take some time and add some pumpkins. I think I'm going to elaborate and add some more. And these are actually going to overlap, so this pumpkin is going to be in front of this one. You go ahead and make your own pumpkins with their own personalities. have our pumpkins in order, we're going to draw some details on the horizon line. And with every pumpkin farm, you need a farm to go with your pumpkins. So I'm going to draw a big rectangle with a triangle roof on top. All right, now every farm has an iconic farm or barn door. All right, and there's usually, for some reason, a nice, thick, white X that goes through the middle. Let's stop right there in the middle. Okay, next to your barn on your farm, you need a silo. And a silo could be a place where they keep... Um, grains for the animals, or maybe they keep seeds for next year's crop. All right, oops, I'm going to just erase that. If you want to be fancy, you can add a little square right in there. So go ahead and make your barn on your farm. And then the last thing that we're going to do, what I might not have told you, is this is a pumpkin farm at night. And around the fall, the moon gets really big and really orange, and it's called the harvest moon. So somewhere above the horizon line, somewhere in the background, I want you to draw a moon. And I think I'm going to draw a really big moon right here. So it's actually in behind the barn. Um, so I'm showing some extra depth there. All right, now we can add some details. I think that we need a fence to kind of protect all of these pumpkins from getting eaten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a fence on the horizon line. So it's going to start off with a fence post, which is a rectangle, every so often, kind of equally spaced, all the way through. I'm going to add an extra one here. And then in the middle, I'm going to put an X. That's probably the simplest way to make our fence. Okay? Now we're going to add some extra details. Perhaps there's other things growing in our farm. So I'm going to make some more rows. I'm going to start at the vanishing point and I'm going to come out. I'm going to start the vanishing point and come out. You can go all the way to the fence if you want. It's up to you. Okay? So maybe there's carrots growing in here. I don't know. So the carrots would mostly be underground, but maybe some of them are popping up. So I'm going to draw a semicircle here and that'll be the green part. Now, the trick to making this look real is remembering our rules. This is in the foreground, so it's going to be big. But as it gets closer to the background or closer to the vanishing point, it's going to get smaller and smaller. And actually going to get further, excuse me, closer together, but I'm not going to press you for that. I'm going to get teeny tiny. All right, and maybe in the next row, there's like a head of cabbage. So I'm just going to draw some big squiggles because we're going to color these with oil pastels and we can't really handle too much detail. A little smaller, a little smaller, and now it's just a little bloop. All right, and I think we want some more carrots on the other side. If you have a different vegetable that you want growing, by all means, you are the artist, you can make that decision. 
um, to grow something else. And if you need help, just raise your hand and I'll be help happy to help you figure out how to draw that vegetable. Maybe you want more pumpkins. I love good pumpkin. All right, so get to that point. If you want to add any extra details, um, go ahead and we'll meet you next time for coloring.